he comes up to me and I said, I'm not here to convert everyone, I'm just giving a wolf. And I told him about Shibi and he said, well, I'm here to convert you. And I said, you could try. You could tell they know nothing about Sikhi. They've just been programmed to think a certain way. Only their way is the way and everyone else is wrong. He's like to me, Satan is telling you to do this. I'm like, Satan is telling me to get up early in the morning and pray. Satan is telling me to do charity. Satan is telling me to treat everyone as one. My family told me Islam's like a ocean. As you go in, it goes deep and deeper. I'm not saying this in a rude way, but where I was at the end of my journey, I felt like that ocean of Islam was more like a pond. And Sikhi was the ocean. Sikhi was just vast. It was greater. Muslims, they would ask a really silly one, is Allah in the toilet or something like that? Is Allah in that thing? Is Allah in you? Is Allah in you? Okay, but break all those things things down if you break them all down to a molecular level everything is mm -hmm. atoms so now let's change the question is Allah in every atom the highest you can achieve is being in the court of Allah but the way they describe it non-alcoholic wine foods have x amount of kuvia which is the entities for pleasure to me it just sounds like all you have to do is be someone who's an Andrew Tate someone really wealthy someone with multiple partners you can have x amount of foods up. to me it was just like you can experience that on this world. It's not really a liberation. It comes across as someone man-made has made this. And I, if you ask me what is the best thing you could ever want in life, for someone to say, I want to merge with Dvahi Guru, to me that's like the best feeling, you know. But to them, they don't agree with that concept. I love Sikhi so much that if my family really didn't want to speak to me, so be it. So if that's the price to pay for Sikhi and you're someone who really wants to spar, kids being asked to convert to Islam, if you're someone that knows your Sikhi, flip the question and say, why shouldn't I be a Sikh? Because a lot of the times they don't know anything about Sikhi. If they ask you to be a Muslim, they say to them, why shouldn't I be a Sikh though? What can your faith offer me that my faith does not offer me? My faith for the officer, I don't need to be Islam. Does your faith talk about such gun achieving Jeev and Mukt in this world? No? Okay, I'm happy being a Sikh. Done. This path is wicked. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs>and I had many talks after that. People said that they would, they only, like, something about that made other people tell their own stories as well, mm -hmm. which I just loved. But from that point onwards, I never had any pressure to that, oh, he's a convert, let's bring him on the camera, he has to tell his story, we've got to tell the whole world. It was respected. That's one thing I loved, that this person's on his journey. Mm. He's speaking to people in his own way, in his own time. He's opening up to people if he wants to. Mm. And so that's one thing I really, really liked about that. No one was pressuring me to do this. This is perhaps the first interview I've done in three, four years. Mm -hmm. I've been on the Sikhi path. Yeah, yeah, because we were speaking about this offline that unfortunately a lot of the times when yeah. um, another faith, you know, we've seen a lot of videos recently, um, you know, where if there was a um, an ex-Sikh who would become an you know, a Muslim, for example, mm -hmm. they would just kind of glow about it online and say, look what's happened here, look what we've been able to do and stuff. And obviously a lot of the, um, you know, the conversion cases that I've been facing now. Uh, but, you know, it was nice to hear that, you know, you didn't feel that pressure and for us. It wasn't a thing about gloating. Mm -hmm. It was just like, it was it was amazing. It was good. But and the main thing yeah. for us is that you just get to go on your journey and you get to um, experience Sikhi. Uh, and that was the main thing. And um, so today on the podcast, we have um, Joe Gussing. Very blessed to have Joe Gussing on. We've known you for quite a while now. It's been about, I'd say about three, four years. The first Sikhs camp. Three, four years, yeah. Yeah. 
2021. 2021. And you mentioned Singers Camp a lot at the start, so shout out to Singers Camp as well. Yeah. And um, you was in my group, innit? it? The first yes. years, isn't it? Yeah. So shout out to my group as well. <laughs> <laughs> as Singers Camp, the best, best group. group. Best yeah. group of Singers Camp representing, <laughs> right? And if you guys don't know about Singers Camp, uh, we'll put the links in the description. Check it out. Um, it's definitely a life changer for the Singers. And of course, there's a cause camp as well for the big beer that can go to but yeah just tell us a bit about yourself because like you said at the start of the podcast you know you weren't always from a sick faith a sick background you're from yeah. an islamic background yeah so just tell us about that and how did the journey come from you g- going from islam to sikhi so growing up to those who don't know um i came from a pakistani family modern family they came from pakistan my grandparents i think, think my granddad was from india mm. so growing up typical Pakistani, Punjabi family. Um, I was, for those that don't know, I do have a stutter. So that's something that's, at the time, it really made me quiet. So I was this quiet, humble kid. And one thing that that meant a lot to me growing up was generally my, my faith. Mm. It was just my personal qualities. I wasn't really caught up in peer pressure or anything like that. Um, but yeah, growing up in Pakistani household, learning about um, so it's Islam. So, so my family was a moderately practicing family in general. I will admit, not highly strict. They are modern in general. What you see in Western society nowadays, in most communities, and yeah. Religions but are. Islam was still practiced. It was still talked about, still enforced on the kids of the family yeah. and the grown ups. So growing up, um, I would hear uh, stories of the Prophet as well especially Moses who had a stutter so I knew stories of the prophet prophet Muhammad we would watch movies that they made about the prophets that I loved I would do my five times namaz when I could trying to be on that path I loved when it was Ramzan especially the food (laughs) doing doing the food shopping for Sehri times and iftar so that was my just life growing up generally when I was a kid then you get to teenage years and as life progresses, you just get hit by different things. Generally growing up, I would always, because you're only ever taught, I would say this, when you're in a Pakistani, even ba- Bangladeshi household as well, because my wife's from Bangladesh, so there are similarities as well. You Other faiths aren't really talked about. You don't really get encouraged to learn about other cultures other religions, you know, people from all different walks of life is mainly Islam. Nothing wrong with that. It's it's if that's just how it is, but that's all you kind of know. So in school as well, like I had friends and I didn't notice this at the time because I'm part of that particular group. There were times as where they would sort of pick on Sikhs as well. This was especially Sikhs mm. or anyone who wasn't really a Muslim. Not all the time, but it's something that I'm looking back now. It it would happen occasionally. Mm. People uh, there would be, um, be Muslim students who tend to be typically from a Pakistani household. I can only talk from a Pakistani ex- ex- experience of those mm. communities, mm. but they would be doing comments, taking the mick out of you know, the Sikhs headwear or someone else, how they looked. So there's been a few experiences of that in school, school life. And throughout that, I didn't really understand why it was that. It was just one of those things where it's it's just normal. So later on, then, as I got older, got into working life, Again, I got married as well. I got married um, young to keep things uh, in marriage. Me and my wife, we we met each other and we wanted to make it halal, as they say. <laughs> uh, so that was one blessing I had in my life. Um, we wanted to, to do things right. So then we got married. But then there, there was really strange. So up to that point when I was a full adult, there were times I even saw in my personal family, and I don't mind sharing this, whereas not to associate with non-Muslims. 
And it's not as if they tell you that. It's you see, it happens in a very indirect way. And when I look at other communities, how they act now as well, you can see it's not like with the uh, the current issue of school kids, for example, um, non-Muslims getting picked on by Muslim students of a particular community. It's you can sort of pick up on that those kids aren't. It happens in a very indirect way. It's not as if your family tells you, right, you have to pick on that person because of so. It, it, it's hard to explain. Hmm. But it's it's either... I mean, I have seen videos of like in the masjid of certain talks that do sound a bit on the strict side of how they view non-Muslims. Hmm. You, even in my own personal experience, it was like what I saw from actions in my family and other Muslims in the community. They see the world as Muslims... And the other half as half is, mm. and that that didn't sit right with me in general. Because what does it mean by kafir? Sorry, kafirs in their definition would mean a disbeliever, but mm. someone who's heard the message mm. but has rejected it, and their message being the message of the prophet. Mm. Do, what is that? If you don't mind me asking, what was that specific message of the prophet that you have to follow Islam or follow the five principles of the faith? Okay. So doing the Shahada, acknowledging the Prophet Muhammad is the final prophet, mm. uh, donating to charity, um, doing five times namaz, mm. fasting for Ramzan, mm. and I believe the last one is, it's, it's an optional one, but being able to do Hajj in your lifetime if you're able to do so. Mm-hmm. Very expensive, by the way. <laughs> Things like 10,000 per ticket. Mm. Um, but when Islam's talked about it, it's talked about in a very peaceful way in general. So growing up, it was like, I, I would always defend it. Like there would be people that would say, they would ask me questions or they would ask me about the common question you get with Prophet Muhammad and Aisha. Mm. Aisha was six years old. I would be the one defending that because I loved my faith. And those questions, I had, when I got old, old enough, I had to sort of research myself a bit. Okay, I need to defend this. Mm. And um, so... I got to, so I got to a point where I was seeing my family. There would be there would be instances like, for example, I wasn't allowed to bring a seat to my nikah. What's a nikah? Sorry. It's the Islamic marriage. So when me and my wife got married, my mom was like, had the thinking, oh, what would the imam say if there's a seat there? Um, what would my family house? can't invite someone over for a cup of tea because my auntie would think, oh, we shouldn't associate with non-Muslims. Mm. So there's a lot of that ideology mm. which it personally didn't sit right with me. Do, I, do you think that was cultural as well as... Or was it religious or was it more cultural? See, you can say cultural because I've seen it a lot in Pakistani and Bangladeshi communities. But the mm. thing is, though, where are they getting it from? This is still a modern country that they're in. Mm. And you said they were quite when, modern as well, to be fair. It, it, it's a strange one because mm. my auntie once told my mum not to associate with non-Muslims because you'll be, we'll, we'll be going to hell. Mm. And I've heard that narrative a few times, even in school. Mm. Where we can't associate with this person because they're a kafir. The way, uh, a secondary reason... Um, I mean, sorry, meaning of that word is second class citizen. So mm. again, it's just it's just looking down upon anyone who's not a Muslim, whereas there's no principle, okay, but that's still a human being. You know, regardless of what they're believing in, he's still got two eyes, two ears, one nose like us. <laughs> so there was many instances of that. So I got to a point, okay, so when I was married, and as always, like, you're married as well. Generally, life hits you. There's so many problems in life, work, you know, generally family, mm. friends, general stef, uh, stress, life chucks at you. Mm-hmm. I was at a point where I was, I guess, my energy was down, just like a low point how we all go through in life. And I was trying to keep strong in my faith. I would pray at work. There'll be just different aspects. Me and my wife, our marriage was crumbling then. This is I'll, I'll tell you how Siki saved saved our marriage. Is oh, I I love my wife so much of what she's um of just how much she's just been there and taken for me. 
but we were at a, at a crumbling aspect of our relationship at the time and we just we were literally about to split and we came back and I felt so bad because her mom which I love so much like my own mother um we mended things and we just got back and this was just when COVID kicked off and I think this COVID was a really strange time because for a lot of people it just made them more sp- spiritually aware mm. and more more active with religion in general mm. so for me I was it's re- okay so this is where it got strange because at this point growing up in school times they don't really teach S- Sikhi a lot it's chosen by the local council how how it's being taught in schools and it tends to be year seven to nine so by the time the students leave no one knows who a Sikh is mm. my personal experience is I didn't really know hardly anything about Sikhi I knew Guru Nanak Dev Ji was the founder I knew Sikhs were lovely people if you're hungry they'll give out free food that's one thing I love about it I knew about the Sikh Raj at the time the Sikh kingdom but besides that I didn't know much so just before COVID hit I started getting I started getting like these random thoughts in my head and it was so strange because it became a pattern. So I didn't notice it at first. You notice it after a while, like three weeks in. And I told, like, I kept telling myself, like, I want to be a seed. And it's, it's just, it was so bizarre, like that feeling, because I barely know anything about it. So it, it just got stronger over that month. This was like February of 2020. And then... At night time, something was telling me, I don't know whether it was some external voice or is it my own conscious, something's telling me I want to be a Sikh. Because at the time I would be praying to Allah, I was doing the namaz there, I wanted to, I, what I was aiming for just to be at peace at mind, I think that's something we all want, just to be at peace at mind generally in this life to progress to the next, whatever, you know, c- c- concept that, that we believe in, heaven, such kind, whichever. And so I told someone who's also a Sikh, uh, generally at, at the time, like, I'm having thoughts that I want to be a Sikh. And they, they didn't take much of it because they didn't think it was serious. But I knew myself that at night times I would hardly, uh, I couldn't sleep. Something was telling me oh, I want to be a Sikh and I couldn't sleep. So throughout the year, the next few months, I kept it a secret to myself and I just started binge watching and reading about Sikhi. That's when I came across the basics of Sikhi, Jagrad Singh. I fell in love with it so much. I kept just all day, all night throughout 2020 because I was out of work as well. I told myself, if I'm really taking this seriously, this is how, how that feeling got so strong because I was someone who used to cut my hair, had a trimmed moustache. I used to eat meat all the time. Um... I told myself if I'm serious, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grow my kiss. So I kept it. And throughout the year, and my in-laws noticed, my mum-in-law kept telling me, you should, you should cut, cut your hair, you should cut your hair. Or how come you're not eating meat? Because they would like cook fish and chicken all the time. But I would tell them I'm a vegetarian now. And they would be like, what, you're a vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> so and I couldn't tell them the real reason why. I just wanted to try this experience. So throughout the year, I did these Sikh practices. I was watching, reading up books about Sikhi. But at the same time, I want to make it clear, I was researching about Islam as well because I think it's very important. If you're someone that's, that's thinking about making a very, it's a, it's a life, it's a big lifestyle choice, changing faiths. You know, there's a lot to it. Mm-hmm. So, if you, commitment as well, yeah, right? yeah. If you're, so if you're born in existing faith, you owe it to yourself to at least learn about that faith so if anyone ever asks you why, you, you you don't hesitate. You know your reasons why you. You don't owe it to anyone to for an explanation, but you know yourself why I left. Mm-hmm. So no one can say to you, oh, did he really know about that religion? Or, you know. So I, yeah, so that year was so immense. Then my wife noticed. And then mm-hmm. this is why uh, I my wife also wants to make it clear. I'll tell a bit about her journey after. But for her, I felt... Because we just came back together and then I'm going to tell her that I'm having thoughts I want to be a Sikh and we just came up, we just came back together and like, 
I feel so bad because I'm doing this to her and it's going to break her. I don't know how her reaction is going to be. Towards the end of the year, it was like at night times, I would literally, I would tear up because if I choose my wife, I lose Siki. If I choose Siki, I might lose my wife. Which one do I choose? And it was, that was quite emotional and hard because, and I couldn't be selfish. I could, something was like, as I kept researching Siki and just living that lifestyle, I would be practicing Simran. I fell in love with Simran so much. There's this, this one YouTube video I still listen to this day. It just resonated with me. Something about it. it was just so beautiful. It just struck my mind. Uh, then I which, fell in love with Keith. Then it, it's a certain Simran. I, 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 I could show you after. Yeah. But it was of a, a female voice doing Simran. But it's, it's just one of my favorites. It's just, that was the first Simran I ever heard. And then I, then I listened to Keith. Then and then there was a time where I, I had a bath in the morning. I woke up at three in the morning. I had a bath. I did Japji Sahib downstairs I went downstairs it was pitch black dark cold I think this was around autumn winter times I did Jabji Sahib and the first time I did Jabji Sahib this was so like surreal because um, when we speak uh, when we talk about sorry I can't say the Punjabi but you know the 10th t- gate Dasam Dwar I came across that concept so when I did Jabji Sahib for the first time and it was just quiet when I got to the end the uh, look when I did that, I honestly felt this uplift of energy, and something was stimulating on my scalp. I don't. It was like I was like, "Whoa, did that really happen?" Like that's literally when I got to the end of Jabji Sahib, and I haven't told uh, many people that, but that was a personal experience. Where it's like this path is wicked. <laughs> and you, you know, uh, just to jump in quickly, you, you spoke about earlier, and it's a very important point that you made. That if somebody is looking to change their faith, yes. you were born into that faith, yeah. right? So you owe it to uh, to that faith, but also to your family, right? Because it's going to cause, yeah. you know, upset in, in most cases, right? That, you know, research your faith. And that's something that we always say that, especially now, yeah. because unfortunately we'll see a lot of cases um, more more now than we have for quite a while of um, Sikhs converting. Yeah. And the, the general thing is that a lot of them are not even practicing Sikhs in the yeah. first place, right? Yeah. Um, you know, which you have to be clear about. If they're not practicing, they don't know anything about Sikhi and they take upon our faith. In this case, you know, if it's Islam yeah. and they will tell you certain things about Islam, about how amazing it is, which I'm not here to dispute. There's beautiful mm-hmm. aspects of all faiths, including Islam. Um, but it's like, they know nothing about Sikhi. They have no yeah. idea. So for yourself then, you're saying that you looked in, you know, at the same time you're learning about Sikhi, yeah. but you were still researching the Islam. What what was you actually researching in Sikhi then? What was it that you were learning, whether it's for the basics videos? And, you know, how are you comparing that to Islam? And what made you want to then leave Islam and come into Sikhi in that time? What was, what was yeah. actually going on in your head? And what were you almost kind of balancing up in your head? So uh, I'll answer the second part first then, hmm. what you're saying. The first thing that I was researching was... Because I didn't know anything about Sikhi at, at that point. Like mm. I said, this feeling, something was telling me to be a Sikh. I was like, okay, I'm researching Sikhi. So it started from scratch. I learned from the, the times of Nanak Dev Ji, uh, really understanding what he... What's interesting is because there were so many religions on the world at this point, You know, we always talk about the main Abrahamic faiths, uh, Judaism, uh, Islam, Christianity... Hinduism as well. So what was the need for Sikhi in this world? When you got these faiths, you got all these leaders and saints in the world. So answering, asking myself why. You you know how in school we learn about why, what, where, when, who. Mm. So I was asking myself these very important questions. What was the need for Sikhi on this world? What has it accomplished? What more has it brung to the people? So that's the first thing that, I really fell in love with that's the I think those are main points you should ask about any religion Mm. so you know on that point a lot of people say um Sikhi is a mix of all these religion amalgamation and I can't I heard that too growing up I used to be one of the people that would be encouraging that like just as you were saying that I do remember saying that to others oh Sikhism is just a mixture of Hinduism and Islam 
no one really takes it seriously. Mm. And look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, no. But, but we believe yeah. it's like an evolution of this, you could say, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's not. It, see, it's strange how they say like we're the copy. First of all, there's many practices that we are against in Islam, you know, such as uh, circumcision of the sons, um, eating eating meat, yeah, things in the halal, hadith, the halal meat. Halal meat. Mm. So it's, it's hearing that it, it triggers me because, again, there's, we, we don't do idol worship. We believe in the one Allah as everyone, you know. So it's just a bit strange how when some people throw that, it's like, have you really looked into it when... G- g- when they say the most common one on n- n- non negativity he was a Muslim. He never had Islamic nagar. His family weren't Muslims. He had teachers that were Muslim. He, he was taught by by Muslim teachers. He also had Hindu teachers as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, it's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, so, so th- some points like that. What it is? It's a concept of just cheap. You know how if one person says it, then the other person says it, then the other person says it. Mm. You know, it's I've I have people sometimes today saying to me, you know, like he was a Muslim, he was inspired by Muslims. So I'm like, okay, okay, you can think that I don't need to waste my time, my breath changing that. So I, I learned mm. about the stories. I did the Y Google course, which gave the full history mm. um, at the time, and I was watching more videos, really understanding about what the concept of Khalsa. Because for, at this point, I loved Khalsa. I I loved how there's this co- there was this concept of vigilantes that are fighting crime, the saving people, the sa- uh, from kingdoms who are claiming they're doing the righteousness, but really the 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 the, the oppressive state, cults are saving women, they're feeding the hungry, so it was kind of like this vigilantism, and it was like growing up, I love comic book movies, and like I love Batman, Vigilantes, and I love video Super games, movie. like Assassin's Creed, yeah. and I like how the cults has checkpoints, you know, places are worshipped, where you, it's a safe house, if you're, if someone sees Nishan Sahib, so I really loved that, and I really wanted to be, I really wanted to receive Amrit, something was like, it was like, it was like, it was this feeling, that it was this greatness, and it, it was really immense and I really wanted to receive Amrit if I was blessed with it and I was growing my kiss. I, I love the warrior aspects of the faith. So so the Sikhi factor was I really wanted to research inside and out. At the same time, comparing it to Islam, growing up I would watch a lot of Dr. Zakir Naik videos. My family would watch them. But there's other preachers. I used to watch spe- uh, Speaker's Corner. Muhammad Hijab, um, Ali, Dalai the most common ones I would watch the Gwad Singh versus Muhammad Hijab videos different <laughs> just just having different views, you know, having an open mind, you know. It wasn't like, okay, I wanna find things that are bad about Islam. There are lovely things in all faiths, you know. You know, my family are still Muslims. Mom, my mom's a Muslim. I, I I don't hate them, you know. I love them as Sikhi teaches us. Mm. Um but yeah I I was reading books and I got to a point where, so growing up, like my family told me Islam's like a ocean. As you go in, it goes deeper and deeper. And I'm not, I'm not saying this in a rude way, but where I was at the end of my journey, I felt like that ocean of Islam was more like a pond and Sikhi was the ocean. Sikhi was just vast. It was greater what it does. And how I interpreted it was for being a, we should all, aspire to be the perfect version of a human being and what I mean by that is when I look at a Amridari Sikh how a general Amridari Sikh is someone who battles their five demons lust, ego, pride, greed, anger someone who objects to worldly opinion doesn't put he doesn't care about public uh, um, or, or what society's view is you know someone who's has puts his faith at a forefront and really focuses on cleansing his mind and spirituality and praying to the one creator uh, someone who in the f- 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 physical sense isn't just hiding in a mountain as a saint someone who's a, a, a fighting the oppression fighting crime i think that to me that was just 
whoa, that's that's a perfect human being. So that's something that I looked up to and I wanted to be in. And Sikhi for me was that was just what I chose at that point. That's that's beautiful. One question I had because a lot of people, I feel like a lot of Muslims struggle to understand the concept of God in Sikhi <laughs> and the concept that Vaiguru could be yeah. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is Vaiguru as yeah, well as existing yeah, yeah. and how is God in creation and outside of creation yeah. at the same time they get confused so how did you overcome that? I found that quite interesting and like because I, I, was, I was actually going into it the other day just researching more about it because we're not the first community that actually talks about Vaiguru being in all creation there's other communities, I think even Quakers, for example, which was a certain community. Like, there's different cultures that talk about it as well. It's not something that's a very new thing that we've only spoken about it. But Sikh, Sikh is a faith that really embraces that factor. Mm. I, so, again, when I was watching those videos where other people, there'll be um, Islam versus um, Sikhi debates, and you would get people... Muslims asking, okay, is, okay, that, so is Allah in, like, they would ask a really silly one, is Allah in the toilet or something like that? Mm. And I didn't interpret it like that. Like, to me, it was, when I fully underst- understood that concept, I broke it down because you know how sometimes, like, scientists say, for example, that we all came from um, the universe, as in particles that you see in space that, Stardust. Yeah, exactly. That mm. dust. So to me, it was the way they answering asking that question is Allah in that in that thing is Allah in you is Allah in you. Okay, but break all those things down. Mm. What is like, if you break them all down to a molecular level? Everything is atoms. It's everything. atoms. Mm. So now let's change the question: Is Vahiguru or Allah or whatever you want to call the Creator? Is he in every atom? And I thought that was a very interesting way of just asking that question. Now it sounds like, whoa. Mm. Because if you say no, that means you're putting a limit on him. Mm. So that's just one way I interpreted that. Like, he's everywhere. And it it blows your mind when you think about it. I can understand to new people. It's like, because the way our mind is, it wants to add logic to something. Mm. Has to sort of think in a certain way. You know, like how we might have questions, oh, but where did he come from? When was this start? Like, our mind wants to know, but there's certain questions you'll never, your mind just can't comprehend the answer. Mm. Adam and Eve was the start. Okay, if Adam and Eve were the first humans, but what was before that? What was before that point? Mm. What was before that point? So The thing is, you can never come approach this concept of spirituality and God with a objective logical yeah. mindset because yeah. that's only going to take you so far and yeah. god and vaiguru is beyond yeah. logic beyond yeah. objectivity yeah. and trying exactly. to prove on a scientific yeah. level but i think the amazing yeah. thing with you is you actually experienced because that's what we believe sikhi is all about experiencing yeah. vaiguru, yeah. right and so of course just take us back to that day so you did japji sahib and you experienced in your dasandwa this spiritual it, thing yes yes so from that point it was it got that that feeling i knew i wanted to uh, be a sick and I think one of the last things it was just understanding was the concept of reincarnation mm. so with that was growing up as a Muslim I remember asking my mum and generally after um, why is it that we're in X situation but other people around the world are poor or they got missiles blown up at them why is why is it so for example a child's born with cancer and has to spend 15 years in the hospital with leukemia but other children are okay you know different scenarios and the answer always I found no matter who you ask they'll say it's Allah's testing you and I wasn't happy with the answer because yes we have we accept everything as hukam but we also say that Allah doesn't discriminate so how is it that it's being chosen what is what is the defining I felt, factor for God? Yeah, I, I, I felt that it was it was a half answer. Mm. So when Sikhi talks about this concept of reincarnation and past deeds, previous lives. Karma. It took me time to really understand it. 
because it's it's coming from an Islamic background where you do not believe in that at all. So that was a aspect that I took time researching. I I, I learned it and it it made sense to me then. Mm. It's like, for example, with my stutter, for example. My whole life, I've see, I've hated my stutter. I see it as a curse. But something. But why do I have a stutter? And for example, not not yourself or not not the person on on the street. The concept of how Siki talks about it is that generally, you you pay the price of what of previous deeds. And to me, like so now when I'm well, when I come into uh, I've come into Siki in this human form, even though I there's times where I see my stutter as an obstacle, I see it as a blessing because Maharaj, like, if I didn't have the stutter, I could have been a completely different person. Mm. It was it's all a process where I was probably meant to be on the path of Sikhi in this or being shown it, and then it's up to me to take it in this. Um, in, in this um, life I'm in now, mm. but that's something I have to pay a consequence to of having a stutter. So I see it as a blessing because it, just to quickly add, when we learn about Guru Arjun's um, Shaheed and when they tried torturing him, but he says your actions are so sweet to mm. uh, Guru. There's times where like I'll say to him myself, like you're giving me this stutter, which hate because this, it's one of the obstacles generally like I can't do Siki Pavitar as great as you guys but I, I try like I have to work right <laughs> I have to work my way around but I say to um I say to Allah that yeah your actions are still so sweet to me because you've given me this path of Siki mm. um did you want to quickly talk about the first part of your question about how other people you you, you were mentioning people who aren't born in the faith mm. So are, are who, who, yeah, who, who are and they want to. So did you did you feel like you gave Islam a fair chance? I did because I, I lived it. I came into Sikhi on that journey at the age of twenty four. So I experienced Islam. I still I really spent that year studying both because, like, and I think you wanted me to me to address on. Um, you, if you're someone who's thinking about changing faiths, if you're someone who's an adult thinking about changing your face, um, you've got to understand how it's going to affect you as well. Spiritually and physically, um, you really got to do, be committed to it. You've got to research into it. Uh, really know that that's the choice you want to make. Um, the thing is now we're getting it a lot with school kids, which upsets me because it's like oh, you haven't experienced Siki, like they because I used to be a kid and as we all were and then at that time you think you know it all but in reality you don't mm-hmm. you know as you as your age of thinking changes mm-hmm. um the one thing I could say is that to especially if there's any youngsters watching you owe it to yourselves you owe it to yourselves to really know your religion there's no excuse now maybe a hundred years ago during the age of the British Raj when Sikhi Pavjar was at a low. We were going through so many things. No talk about Sikhi. Now there's no now there's no excuse. The age of te- technology, everything's on your phone. If you're someone that's unsure about your faith, start from somewhere. Read a book or to watch a video. Something that... See, with me, is it started with love. And I think religion needs to start from love. So if you're someone that hasn't... Like, if you're from a Sikh family and you haven't... You're not really having a strong <coughs> will, then do it of das. You know, keep trying. Tell your identity is you. That's. I'll say it this way: in life, as humans, we go through so many things, and we're taught not to um, be close to worldly attachments. You know, one day I might lose my my mom, grandparent. I might lose my job. No matter what you lose in life, you you should be able to tell yourself, you know what? At least I got my faith. You know, so that's something I tell me as we, I tell myself if I ever have highs and lows in life. Mm. So, and I think it's with what's been happening now, it's a wake up call to parents in general. I won't lie. I have met a lot of quite a few people over the past few years 
who tell me uh, in conversation that they are Sikh, but they come from a not, it was never practicing, you can tell. It was mm. either one parent was Hindu, one parent was Sikh, so they they don't know. Mm. But, 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 but there's no excuse, you have to like, it's hard, but you've got to either learn it yourself or if you're a parent, it's your duty as a parent to, parent to teach your, your kid your faith, you know. Mm. It starts from somewhere. This is the thing, because a lot of the cases we've seen recently, the the, the family, there's a vulnerable situation of the kid. Mm. He's in a vulnerable situation or her. And then the parents don't really know anything about Sikhi. Yeah. And then when the kid gets into like peer pressure at school mm. from other faiths um, uh, to convert, um, and they kind of, these people kind of prey on that vulnerability that they're going through mm. at that point, and, it, and they convert them. Then the parents in the house realize it's like, What's, ha- what's happened Yeah And we should have known Something about Sikhi And then they take the kids To the good And they're like Can you Talk to our kid Who's converting yeah. But it's too late At that the point The thing is Yeah exactly You hit the nail on the head It's literally See at that age When they're in school When the Emotions are everywhere And they want to Calling to something Like See it's It's it, it, it's difficult To give advice um, Because I come from a, I, I wasn't brought up In a, in a seat family i don't know how it is growing up Sikh. the one common thing that's been highlighted in the recent cases they've um, they made a group chat and hearing so hearing other people's experiences was there's not been a, a unity in the Sikh community and growing up with the youth you know there's not been like much um socializing that type of culture you know all they, mm. they, there was but it was broken neither committee members stopped youth clubs or something and it's something you see in other faiths where their communities are really strong but in Punjabi Sikh households it's mm. it was sadly dying is in there the strong, early 2000s in your, in your uh, like youth in those years did you find there's a strong community in the Islamic groups and stuff definitely mm. because you can see how strong it is now like yep. they stick by each other you know they mm. help each other out and that's something that mm. yeah. It's not a negative. All communities should be like that, strong. Um, mm. But sadly, the Sikh community, it's... 100%. You don't have to add this in if you don't want to, but did you learn the whole Quran off by heart? Were you a Haf- is it Hafiz? Is it... Hafiz, yeah. yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I remember I started classes, but I didn't. Mm. Mm. I did go to Masjid. Um, I, I, I did go to Masjid, but I didn't go young. Um, my mum didn't send me at first because one of the reasons why she was afraid of radicalism going on in mustards oh. so that's one thing i would say but i started going after i did start classes for hafiz but you need it uh to be committed to it it takes time and commitment mm. just um there was a there's a lot of things that we've spoken about so yeah. it'd be good if we could sure. just because i got a lot of questions in yeah. my head and these are important points the first thing um just touch on what you said about um like uh parents and that is an important thing because if parents are watching this, and I'm sure a lot of parents will be watching this, watching this especially sick parents, um, a lot of the times, and it's not uh, us judging anyone yeah, else, yeah. Uh, a lot of times parents do not follow Sikhi. And the worst thing that we've seen recently is where, like Karavi Singh said, that parents are now scared for their kids. Mm-hmm. That, you know, because any faith, even yeah. if, you know, even if you're a, a Muslim parent and your kids come up saying yeah, that I want to convert, yeah. if you're a Sikh parent, your kids come say yeah. I want to convert to Hinduism, yeah. is it mm-hmm. Islam, Christianity? Yeah. That parent's gonna feel so, you yeah. know, scared and yeah. sad. And I imagine my mom went through that. Yeah, uh, right. With me, so exactly. It's... So, but uh, and what I'm trying to say here, when it comes to the the Sikh parents, is that that means that you have to make. A step you have to take responsibility learn about sick yourself you can't force it in the kids because that's happened a few times where the parents then and we're, we're happy to help anyone but it's almost too late when somebody has now committed to another faith because we haven't given the opportunity to learn about sick and we've never made an effort ourselves as yeah. parents to learn about sick we can't just send our kids to Punjabi school because we all know that Punjabi schools um in most cases um, are not effective in teaching Sikhi. Mm-hmm. So we have to take the opportunity now to learn about you Sikhi. Need to, <laughs> you need to inspire your kids as well by yeah. living Sikhi, right? Yeah, how can they follow something that you, we're not following ourselves, right? So yeah. um, we have to take that step. It's really important. Um, and just coming back to some of the points that we mentioned earlier, um, you talked about, um, again, comparing the two, and kind of you made an important point um, earlier about logic, 
Yeah. Um, do you feel like when it comes to Islam, there was a lot of this idea of logic and miracles and science and that if these were kind of, these boxes were ticked, then, you know, yeah. you, evidence. it's evidence. Yeah. And yeah. with Sikhi, we're not about that. Like when somebody comes to me and says yeah. to me, but, you know, in, in our scriptures, it says this and, um, you know, about science and it's proved. I'm like, I don't care. Like that, that's like... Yeah. That's the most minus yeah. point to me. That means nothing to me. Just to add to that, because it's something I forgot to mention as well. It's it's interesting you brought that up because the main thing that I came into Sikhi was, and I think the main reason every like everyone comes into a faith is we want that salvation, whatever we how however we interpret that is, mm. and salvation basically of our soul because we all know when life's temporary, we're gonna go. So what is it that we're yearning for after? Mm. Besides all the small points of that I didn't agree with Islam, the main reason I came into Sikhi was the way we talk about liberation. Mm. You know, such gun, peace of the mind, peace of the soul. And how after we... I mean, it's a very challenging path. Mm. But if you're able to do it, Maharaj, by your soul... The, the concept of in Sikhi of us having the light of Rahiguru inside us and it merges back to the ultimate Rahiguru, I fell in love with that. And I compared that, for example, because Abrahamic faiths don't believe that. They don't have that concept where um, where you can merge back with Allah. It's it, It's separate. You have the highest you can achieve is being in the court of Allah. His, that's his bl- 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 blessing. But the way they describe it, rivers of honey, milk. You can wine. You can have non non alcoholic wine, mm. foods, and in it, it. If if you have a husband and and you're married, but you can still have X amount of who um. Who we are, which is the entities for pleasure. To me, it just sounds like, you know how in the last year the most con- controversial person was Andrew Tate. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is be someone who's an Andrew Tate, like someone really wealthy, someone with, with multiple partners. You can have X amount of foods. Uh, to me, it was just like you thinking back on it now. That's just you can experience that on this world. It's not really a liberation. It sounds like it comes across as someone man-made has made this. And I, I get the argument to say is it's because we're humans. It's got to be enticing to us to want to achieve that heaven. But to me, it's like, no, like if you ask me what is the best thing you could ever want in life, like for someone to say, um, I want to merging with Vahi Gugavu, I just like, to me, that's like, the best feeling you know but to them they don't agree with that concept so i mean you know sorry bro just to clarify as yeah. well so when you're saying like allah why guru you're using it interchangeably i use it interchangeably and the... one because one i do that because to me it's the same i hate it when communities fight over each other and they mm. say allah's this and they say christians say father to me it's very simple you know before there was like there's been tribes of man throughout history even on different planets, you know how they talk about aliens, but really it's just tribes of other communities. The only constant throughout the ages is Allah. Mm. I say Allah because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because because I stutter, I found it really hard to say Rahi. I stutter on G. So I I say Allah because it's a bit more easier. But at the same time, we believe it's the same. It's the one. And as I was saying before. He's the only constant throughout the ages of mankind. So he's be every different community would call him by a different name. It's not oh, there's only there's only ninety nine names of God and that's it. I remember um, when my wife told her family and then she oh, she was backlash with her uncle and on the phone and sometimes they come out with really silly points. No, he's Allah because we we would say no, we believe in Allah too, but that triggers them. Because it's like they think they've trademarked Allah, <laughs> which is funny. But then they'll say, no, oh, we, uh, they don't agree with what we call Allah. Uh, 
so it's it, it, that's a strange one. Mm, that's it's, it's that's a good point. yeah. I just wanted to clarify yeah. for any viewers who are confused. Uh, like it comes in good one as well. There's a Sabah Khana. Koi 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 and the experience of becoming one with Vaigur Ji. And that was yeah. my next question, which is, it's, it's, a one, it's a one question, but it's quite broad. And that is of fear. Because you yeah. said you came to Sikhi because of love, yeah. right? which is beautiful. But I feel like a lot of times, um, one thing that other faiths will use, and in this case, if we're talking about Islam, they use fear a lot, right? And they'll say, and we've seen this with cases, like um, people will say to us, okay, the reason why I convert is because I was afraid that I was going to go to hell. Eternal hellfire. Eternal hellfire. And it's like, so you change your faith out of fear. They came into Islam. No, they came, yeah, they came to Islam. Because they thought they would go to hell if they, if didn't. they didn't follow Islam, right? Because you know you said yeah. earlier about I'm um, accepting the kafir and the, kafir, the truth, yeah. the, the message of yeah. um, Muhammad, yeah. um, that if you do not accept that, then you'll go to hell. Yeah. We could, you under, what is that concept specifically? What do they actually... Uh, Believe because in my head that didn't make any sense because I remember we had a we had one case we were speaking to a young Sikh um, who had converted to Islam yeah and um, he said that look he didn't he didn't want he had no what he's like um there's no probability no 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 he said at that time that he wasn't if he was to die today then he didn't want to go to hell so he accepted Islam because he didn't want to go to hell okay. and I said to him. So what about your parents that are sick and your brother? He goes, they're going to go to hell. And he goes, you got no problem with it? I go, you got no problem with that? He goes, no. And in my head, it just sounded, I was like... But you came into the faith out of fear, not love. Yeah. So my, my so point how, here to use yeah. the whole idea of fear is that, um, can you expound on that? Like, I feel that's a big point that they use against six. But even in the faith of Islam, is that a big tool they use in general? Like, you just reminded me of, you actually just reminded me of um, I'll bring it up now So when I was um, a child I remember So in my house we had uh, tenants staying with us We had uh, There were other Muslims A Indian family And at school I had a Sikh friend And one of my Muslims friends said to him was So oh, you're a kafe you're, uh, You'll be in um, You'll end up in hellfire So when I was conversating with one of the tenants Who was a grown up I, I remember saying to him um, um, when he was talking about what happened in, in school for me, uh, I was saying to him that oh, I was a bit upset about my friend, my Sikh friend, because my Muslim friend said that oh, you're gonna you're a you're gonna end up in hellfire. Now, to me, an, an appropriate grown up response would be oh, that's really bad. They shouldn't be looking down upon non Muslims in that way. You know, children are children. They, they they should see it. at that age. You should just be seeing everyone in a lovely way. You know, but his uh, his reply was um, his reply straight up was, yeah. But we believe uh, the kafirs will be in the hellfire. Like there's just there was just no humanity. Like I get that's the blunt answer, mm. but there's just it's just from that I remember. I think I was like ten years old then. It was just from that answer. It was like, but uh, okay, do we? It just goes back to you know what kafir I means second class citizens. Okay, they're just second class. Leave them. Yeah, they're they're gonna go, they're gonna go hellfire. They're not. We don't see them as human beings. It's, it is not seem very compassionate to me. That was what yeah, I just saw it's... when because when we were speaking to the young, uh, the young kid, and uh, to me it just didn't make sense. Like you're saying to me that if I was a good person my whole life, and I'm sure we probably get comments on yeah. this as well, um, like saying no, 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 it's this and that. But if you're telling me my whole life I followed Sikhi, yeah, and I oh, I was a Christian for example, yeah, and I I fed. I fed the poor. I looked after everybody. I was a good person. Yeah. And I, and I prayed to, you know, my creator, whatever yeah. name I had for them. I follow those principles. Just because I don't accept your truth. Yeah. That I'm going to go to hell forever. Mm -hmm. So let's just say I made mistakes for the last, uh, according to what the, what Islam yeah. teaches, I didn't follow your truth. And I carried on, carried on like this for 80 years. Yeah. Right. And I died after 80 years. 
you're telling me because of 80 years of not accepting your truth and um you know lies that i'm gonna go to hell forever yeah it, it just didn't make sense to me like what yeah. even if somebody was the worst of the worst and they it committed so many crimes for 80 years you're telling me that god is going to punish you for for billions upon well no it's not even billions it's yeah. eternity and infinity. Hell, infinity in the hellfire yeah. I, it just didn't make sense to me because i don't understand god to be that yeah. how can god be that one um, thing that all faiths say just to literally add to your point is mm. I'll, he loves you Mm. Christians say the Father loves you. Mm. Muslims say, like we all have this concept that Allah loves you, mm. you know, as His creation. So it's like, okay, you're gonna be in hellfire. Well, hang on, where's that love then? It's like mm. when they say Allah is forgiving. Mm. Mm. So if, if Allah is the most merciful. Merciful, most yeah, forgiving. exactly. Huh? Most like merciful. Any any forgiving. parent, they would never punish their kid forever. You maybe exactly. they've done something wrong. Jalo it's very punish. binary. You're not a Muslim, hellfire. You are a Muslim. Yeah. And I know you, there's you more to it. the concept. Like they say that when you die, you'll you get, get tested. given, yeah. tested. You get questioned. Yeah, questioned. There are similarities. Pass, and if you pass yeah. that, then you're thingy. But again, it just, it didn't make sense to you because again, me uh, as a Sikh and, you know, Guru Skir, Guru Kirpak, until my last breath, I'll be a Sikh. Yeah. And um, I'm never going to, you know, change that. Yeah. So that means that any good that I've done in my life, it, it counts as zero and I'm going yeah. to hell forever. It, it just doesn't make sense. And as Sikh, we're not here to say that if you're yeah. Muslim, mate, you're going to hell. If you're yeah. a Christian, you're going to hell. And uh, we appreciate there's truths in other faiths. Yeah. And if you can follow that truth, then, you know, you can meet the one as well. Right? Yeah. We're not here to say that only Sikhs get liberation. We've seen it in the past. Other faiths have got liberation as well. Exactly. But of course, as a Sikh, um, we appreciate and, and we and the reason why yeah. we are sick is that the easiest way to get liberation in this mm-hmm. dark age of Kaljug is through Guru Nandeji. Yeah. Uh, there is no one as great no one as great as Guru Nandeji Maharaj. Mm-hmm. But today you got people and kids that have been brainwashed to saying that yeah. Guru Nandeji is a shaitan. Yeah. yeah. They calling him yeah. shaitan referring to like a devil. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like how can how can somebody follow a different faith and call their previous faiths um, like guru or prophet a devil. Like even if somebody came into the Sikh faith, we would never ever, and even to this day, we will never ever cuss yeah. another prophet of another religion. Mm. And it just shows like the people that we're dealing with. And of course, we've got to make this disclaimer. Yeah. We've got no hate towards any faith. You had to do it in every video. Yeah. Just because we've got no hate towards um, Muslims, to Christians. Even this video may yeah. seem like we're almost gunning um, the Islamic faith, which we're not, we're just gutting those people who use religion as a tool to brainwash people. Yeah. Because a lot of my friends, even to this day, my oldest friends are Muslims. Mm. They're not even uh, Sikhs. Yeah. You got know I me, mean, right? Wow. So, you know, but, but again, those are the the 99.9% of the good Muslims, mm. right? Because yeah. obviously there's a lot of Muslims, yeah. right? Over a billion. And majority, beautiful. Right? Of course, you don't, uh, we don't agree with certain things in their faith, but we yeah. don't go our way to even discuss them. Um, we're just talking about today because of all the cases that are coming up. And again, I was speaking about when it comes to um, this idea of reincarnation. Yeah. And when it comes to heaven and hell, uh, where they're trying to use that to put fear into young Sikhs or people of different faith. It doesn't make sense. Like you're going to join a faith because you're scared of their hellfire. But you should be falling in love with yeah. with your faith. You should be falling in love with the guru or fall in love with the prophet. And not because, oh, I don't want to go to hell. And that was used mm-hmm. on me when yeah. I was a kid. I was told that, you know, if you don't accept Islam, you're going to go to hell. Yeah. And it, it shook me up. I was scared as a kid. No one wants yeah. to go to hell. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean, it? So yeah. when we think about Vahiguru, Allah, Ram, yeah. whatever name we have for them, they're the most, the Allu, get a the most loving, um, merciful person, being. <laughs> yeah. And why would they ever wish that for us? Right? Exactly. And, so. and in Sikhi, we actually believe that right that the compassion is the actual the essence the main thing you need and your dharam comes from that compassion yeah. right mm. your religion your righteousness everything comes from compassion mm-hmm. so that should be the first step if we believe in god is that ultimate compassion yeah. we should embody mm. that compassion another point i like i would like to make is just how Sikhi has blessed people from diff on different tribes on the earth is like so I, when attending different programs, I like going to the Midlands especially. Oh, because you tend to see a lot of 
non-Punjabi born Sikhs, like I see European Sikhs, I see white English Sikhs, I see African Sikhs and I think, wow, Sikhi found you on a certain way and that is just amazing. So just to add to like a point of any youngsters who are going through that where they're thinking about changing faiths, but think about how Sikhi has touched people from those faiths into Sikhi, hmm. you know? So it's just, it's just, I find that so amazing how mm. Sikhi started. It started from one person in 1469. It's grown to this immense community. And it's because of previously what happened in the 1900s, British Faj forced a lot of Sikhs out. But we've blossomed. You know, I see the positive of it. Mm. You know, Sikhs blossomed in so many countries. A lot of people respect Sikhs. Mm. Um, I've been... I'm Badawi for a few years now and when people see Mr. Singh Sardarji, how are you sir? Literally, I, I've been getting like, Maharaj's roop, I've embraced, you know, uh, I I love it. I, <laughs> I, I wear it, it for my own personal reasons. Uh, there isn't a right or wrong to wear it. Um, if you don't wear it, if you do wear it, I wear it for my own personal reasons. I love Sikhi so much. It so, prompts, you, so you wear the Bana... I, I wear Bana all the time. It was just a personal choice. I understand. Um, I just want to make it clear to um, 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 other Sings as well because I, I don't know if this may be a Sing who might think, oh, he wears all the time. He might, you know, he thinks. Just to, like, I'm aware that Nanak Devji addresses that. Mm. Just because someone wears certain robes doesn't mean, yeah. you know, the so and so person. Like, the really, the real battles in here, in the mind. Mm. But I just, because I came into Sikhi at the age of 24, you know, I, I want to live and breathe just in Maharaj's Um I've seen um, life is short. I've been to a few funerals, um, funerals um, of a very elderly person, including my grandfather, who's in his 90s um, as a Sikh. I'll, t- I'll tell you that story after. And a um a, a five year old who died with cancer, so life's too short. I don't know when I'm gonna uh, die. So I, I I read it like I just love that it's gonna be in Kal Sabana. It might not mean mean anything, but it's just a personal thing for me. And as well as that, it's like it's my way of telling people whether even people from other faiths embrace who you are. Don't care what people think. I wear this to work. Sometimes I wear a shield to work. Uh, which surprises people. <laughs> That's cool. Um, there isn't even with that. There's no legal um thing to stop me from wearing it. If you're in the office, I want to wear it. It's my religious attire. So what? And it just it just helps me. And people in public. They'll they'll stop and ask questions. So that's my way of doing doing Sikhi of job as well. I love conversation to people. People want to know more about the faith. I tell them about the Khalsa. Mm. So. That's I think one me. beautiful thing you t- talked about earlier, and we touched upon it um, from a different angle, was the whole idea of uh, mukti, liberation yeah. as well. And just for those who may not understand the Sikh form of, um, you know, how does reincarnation fit into it? How does heaven and hell fit into it? What is liberation in Sikhi? Well, very simply... What's basic Sikhi? <laughs> what's basic Sikhi? <laughs> well, that's probably the main thing you could do where you learn everything. But in Sikhi, we also have the idea of heaven and hell. Yeah. Uh, but we also have the idea of reincarnation. So generally speaking, you know, if somebody was to pass and they don't live a perfect life, they'd probably go back into reincarnation. If they lived a really bad life, I'm really watering it down, then they'll go to hell, but it's mm-hmm. not eternal. Yeah. Um, they'd have to go through... So and there's te- temporary hell. Temporary hell. Tem- yeah. Even temporary heavens. Yeah, and, and that's another thing, right? So then mm. if you live a good life, but a life of desires, then you can go to heaven. And maybe some of these heavens may be filled with loads of desires that may be spoken about. Would it be like the Islamic heaven being exactly. one of them? It, it could that be. Could be it could of, be one of them yeah. because uh, heaven is filled with pleasure and desires as well, right? But this is the thing, right? Heaven, earth, and hell all subject to Maya. Yeah. They're all subject to the illusion. So heaven, like if you hear about the different examples given in our you know scriptures, Gurbani and so on, the different types of loks, worlds, like Swadag Swadag Lok yeah. is given to, right? Swadag means refers to the heavens, right? And there's like Brahm Lok, Brahmpuri is called Shiv Puri, um, like where the, these different entities 
uh, it would be like their type of heaven where there's mm. pleasures, right? But again, the reason I'm saying this is that this is all, this means nothing to a Sikh, right? So when other people say we want to get to heaven, for a Sikh, that's not high at all, yeah, right? It means tainted. nothing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all a part of Maya. Like you said about the Andrew Tate example, yeah. that what he's, you're talking about experiencing there, you can experience here. The only thing that they say is that what you experience there in terms of pleasure is yeah. much more than it's, the pleasure it's like you get amplified. here. Yeah. It's yeah. amplified, but it's all pleasure. It's the it's, same yeah. world. You'll have the um, same, uh, they'll, they say you have the um, the uh, the strength as uh, three, like three times of average man <laughs> in terms of what you can consume. And it's like, yeah, was this written by a man? <laughs> yeah, but th- that's the thing. We're not even to. We're not even here yeah. to say whether that's yeah. right or wrong because we can see the similarities, yeah. right? Yeah. But what they don't have, and what we're speaking about, is such kind. Yeah, and uh, shout out to Pajak Jit Singh from uh, Castle Foundation because we yeah. spoke about this in one of our previous podcasts that we do not tell our community, we don't tell the world about such kind. Yeah, right? what is such kind? It comes in Japji Sahib. Uh, such kind vase mm-hmm. where why Guruji resides themselves right yeah. where the gurus reside where mm-hmm. all those that have become one mm-hmm. with why Guruji reside and if we become one with why Guruji we go to such kind yeah right and such kind is like the top of the top yeah right? it's right all the heavens are, are nothing compared to such yeah. kind and that's where we're aiming where that's where we are aiming to go and that's the one concept again not trying to go into too much detail when somebody passes if they live that that spiritual life right they live that warrior lifestyle of the mind not just mm-hmm. of the physical right because uh, in some cases you might not have to face anything physical um you can go to such kind yeah right but the another concept that is unique to sikhi um is that you don't have to wait till you die so you can become one with vahiguru allah Ram, whatever name you have for them now in the present moment you can merge back yeah. And that is known as Jeevan Mukt. So that you, means you can experience Satchkhand while you're here. Yeah. Right? Which is essentially like like you said you had that experience that day when you're reading Japri Sahib. Yeah, yeah. That was a taste of that, right? Mm, you yeah. with your Dasanzwa, through your Dasanzwa. So that's all here, like VG saying, that's mm. all here in the present moment where if we go inside we can connect to that one. Uh like that comes in Gudubani, Jo Brahmande, Soi Pinde. That wherever's outside of the whole creation, yeah, it's inside this pin, it's inside yeah. this village is body inside yeah. you right if you search for it you're gonna find it yeah right so the the point i'm trying to make is that mm-hmm. we do have our own concept it's much greater and bigger um than mm-hmm. other faiths concepts yeah. right and we obviously again we we're unfortunate we don't really share our sikhi even with our own families yeah you know what i mean to show them hey you can you can experience such kind of whilst you're alive and like Viji said, you can experience it now because even it comes in yeah. our scriptures by Gurudashi's Vada, Sadh Sangat Sach Khand Hai, Vasa Nirankar. That by yeah. doing Sadh Sangat, by going to the Gurudar Sahib, sitting there, listening to Katha yeah. and connecting, that is Sach Khand yeah. on earth, right? Yeah. So I thought I'd just clear that up just to kind of um, give that clarity that what is our concept? It's more than heaven, hell. Or reincarnation you know, is becoming there's one. There's a video of uh, Degrad Singh. I remember watching when he's talking to someone about drugs and about like, oh, you take this drug and this drug. And then Degrad Singh say, I think it's in New York, one of the street portal videos, and he says that Nam is such a thing. It's beyond all these drugs. Yeah. You can access it whenever you want. Yeah. There's no like hangover yeah. or anything negative consequences, downsides from it. Mm. So it's it's a level of bliss that you can't yeah. get from anywhere else. And that's what we're saying. Satchkand is this eternal bliss yeah. mm. that you you don't get it from anything else. You yeah. won't get it from anywhere else. And that's and, why I became a Sikh. That's the main reason. Like I can nitpick things I disagreed with Islam. I could be here all day and argue and then go back and forth. But the main reason is that I rather not do that because, like, I have seen other videos of ex-Muslims, for example. They'll make a YouTube video why I left Islam. Like that's great if you want to do that. Personally, I felt. You're wasting time. It's going to achieve nothing for your own spirituality. Mm. I want to focus on my spirituality this way. So Islam, if someone wants to be a Muslim genuinely after researching it, by all means, if you feel that's what you want to embrace, you can. Mm. But as we've spoken, this is the main reason that a Sikh should be a Sikh and aspire to, you know... Mm. So do you mind just t- talking about so after that experience that day, what happened next? Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to hear your story. So, <laughs> you went off on a long tangent. Let's come back onto the So we'll the come back to that. So, okay. So 
at this point, things were starting to, different things were changing. Like, because I've realized the, is this, if I become a sick and I'm living at home with my mom and my sister, my mom's a single parent. So, um, is this doable? If I tell them I'm gonna be a sick, like this is this is why it's major. When this is why when I feel sorry for a lot of kids to saying oh, I want to be a Muslim, okay, but do you understand how it's gonna impact your family? Are you old enough? Do you have money in the bank to save up for your own house if they kick you out? You know, are you thinking about if your family's dangerous or if they hurt you? Um, so I thought about these uh, things and the Samahara just give birth things work the way it did uh me and my wife we 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 moved out temporarily so your wife moved out was this when you told her about sick no, no so with me with yeah. me she so my wife was very sweet so i told her in the first few months when i was watching videos that i don't know why but i wanted to be a seek and she was like i could see she was panicking next to this like she would see me in the computer watching jaguar sing and like she, <laughs> she would be saying to like she would say to me um she would say to me um it's fine you can be a you could just um she would, she would she would say to me just pretend to be a muslim and you can secretly pray the Sikh way like i, I found her so sweet and i love her for saying that because she was panicking and I, I was so that was really like hard but we moved out temporarily and so that's when I was able to do a job to side. I, I bought my, I see, uh, I bought my five Ks from Siki Store. Uh, bought Ban, um, Kashiva, Kanga. Uh, I grew my case and um, am I missing one? Oh, on. Yeah, All right, yeah. <laughs> um, so I bought them and I was like thinking was like practicing how to tie a turban. It's so hard. It takes practice. That's why that's also another thing why I feel like, especially if you're a Sikh child, like learning to like if if you're a kid who wears a patka all the time, who's going to tell you uh, maybe you should start learning how to tie a turban? And I see this with a lot of teenagers, like they would be wearing a patka for so long. Their top knot is massive. Mm. And I think, OK, you got to start wearing a turban because if you if you tie it too late you're not gonna um it'll put you off because it takes time to really get the hang of it handling that material so when i see little kids like toddler age tying it and they're getting used to it by the time they reach teenager they, they've mastered it mm. but yes yeah, so I, I, I bought those and um so okay so a year went by and at that point my wife was, my wife started researching about Siki and she wants me, because she, she knows I'm doing an interview today, she wants to make it clear that she never came into Siki because of me. Mm. Even though some people might think, oh, her husband came to Siki, so she's naturally going to follow. For her, it was a internal journey as well. Yes, I started it, she saw me. But she started researching about it. She did the same course I did, basics of Sikhi. She actually messaged Ali Dawa. Oh. She actually messaged Ali Dawa <laughs> and asked him, uh, this I think it was through Instagram, saying that she was being respectful, as um, was asking him as a brother, my husband wants to be a Sikh, can I still be with him? I think she kind of knew what his answer was going to be, but for herself clarity she wanted to know and i think he messaged her i, I didn't care what he said because i knew what the answer would be mm. uh but he replied to her and she yeah uh, she showed me and told me the answer and i think that made him panic as well seeing one of <laughs> a muslim sister coming into uh, Sikhi. um because she yeah she fell in love with Sikhi. she started doing kivdan mm. and something about it just you know how um you could say you, you know how we play instruments as well and it's kind of like how you tune a, ra a radio. And if it's on the wrong frequency, you hear that sh sh sound mm. until you get on the right frequency. So with that was like, she she fell in love with Givdan. Mm. Just how, how it was, the Nam Simran. And she was researching it a lot. And she also over time, she was open to the idea of being a Sikh. 
I told myself I really wanted to receive Amrit. Visaki was coming up. This was the year after 2021. But at that point, I was like, my wife, her name's Hanit now, um, she wasn't ready and I couldn't be selfish. At this point, we managed to find a apartment with just me and her. So I was happy because first I was like, okay, I can't be a Sikh if I'm living with my mom and sister. It's going to be like hellfire in the same household. Mm -hmm. Me showing up like this <laughs> to the house. Um, so after that point, um, yeah, so I had to, I had, people were telling me, listen, don't be selfish. Think about your wife, you know. And we'll be having so many talks. Luckily, there's a close uh, Sikh family. This is very really interesting. So there's a close Sikh family that were family friends with my family. And they, so my family, including my mom, is so annoying because they think, for example, I've been groomed by Sikhs, which is not the case. That's not true. Never, ever did they say to me, be a Sikh. This was my, as I explained in the previous hour. This was my whole journey, and it, it, get, it gets so annoying because to this day they will constantly think that, and that's that's never happened. But Maharaja Gilba, like because I never came from a Sikhi family, they're still there for me and Hani today. Cause so because we've lost our families, mm -hmm. but they're like our Sikhi families that we can still um, relate with, and so they we would have talks with them, and because they even they knew it's a really big thing. If you're someone who leaves us, like especially in Punjabi culture, like families now, if you if you're someone says they want to go to Islam, it's going to be hellfire in the household, you know, mm -hmm. especially like having Punjabi uncles. So over time, um, my my wife saw that I was I was so upset if I wasn't be a Sikh, and I think she like. We spoke about it and she said, I'm, I like, I'm happy for you. If you want to do this, do it. Because I wanted to attend the Amrit Sanjar. And it was a bit like, I remember I was, I was sending emails to basics of Sikhi, like, because I'm a situation, because I'm married. And because generally, for those that don't know, the Red Mariyadda says that Amrit Dari Sikh has to be with another Amrit Dari Sikh. Um, married. In yeah, yeah. In if, if, if you're getting married mm. um, as well. So, um, but it, it's it's always a grey area when you come from different scenarios. Mm. So June it was, June nineteenth, my Amrit Sanjar, I told myself that I would I wanna go. I went so I went all the way to Birmingham and I went to I went to the Amrit Sanjar and Maharaj Gibba I was I was blessed with Amrit. I noticed down my my Hukam Nama and from that point, it was... Did you have any, like, spiritual experience? There? Oh, y yes. You just reminded me. <laughs> you, just, you just reminded me. So what happened was... So because I knew I would be getting a new name... Um, you, you know what? I'll, I'll say my name if I if I have to. My old name was Asif Khan. Uh, I don't mind saying it now. It's fine. Uh, but I knew I was going to, going to get a new name. So during the Amit Sanjar, as it was happening, um, I told myself... I was telling myself, okay, I want to get my new name. Maharaj, I was speaking or I was speaking to Guru Gobind Singh Ji from Dahar and I said, Maharaj Ji, if I just have one binti, if um, I, because I know my new name will be coming, could I, if I could choose the Akka, I really want it to be a Janja. I don't know what it was with the J. There was something about it that I just loved, like, not just Jagwad Singh, but uh, Jajav Singh. One of the sahibs out there, and um, yeah, it's just Jay stood out to me. So I asked, I honestly did that during the Amit Sanjav, and it was so weird. Like when they came to me at the end, when the cult said they were, they, they were looking at the Hukam Nama, and I was like, I was like, oh, standing on the side, but I was just pounding. They came over to me, and they, because there was other people in the Amit Sanjav, so they introduced me to the Sankat, and they said to me, uh, you are jo by Jogga Singh and that was like I was like out of all the akavs it could be all the letters mm. it was actually a J a Jaja and it was like I was like wow you know what this Maharaj he's real he's out there because <laughs> <laughs> that was a, I a really strange coincidence and especially with Jogga Singh they told me look up the story of by Jogga Singh I, I, I didn't know 
So it was having a name that's a sake attached to it. Mm. Um, do you want to share the story? Pai Joga Singh Ji, what you remember of it? I think you'll be better <laughs> explaining it. So Pai Joga Singh Ji was, um, was a Sikh of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Yeah. And um, they, you could say that Guru said you showed Pai Joga Singh Ji a lot of love. Right? And uh, in one respect, you know, obviously everybody, you know, they want to feel that love from the Guru and they do, but he felt so much love. And what happened was that um, Pai Joga Singh Ji was getting married. Right? He's, he's doing his Anand Garage and... Um, he was in the Sikh Anand Karaj. You walk around Guru Sahib Ji, Guru Gan Sahib mm-hmm. Maharaj Ji. Um, so in that case, Pajoga Singh Ji was doing his Anand Karaj. And on the second or the third love, so when you walk around the Guru, the second or the third time, I can't remember, because you put me on the spot now as well, um, a, a letter came from yeah. Pajoga Singh Ji, right? And that letter is from Guru Gobis, and he's saying that, come right now to see me. And Pajoga Singh Ji left his marriage ceremony at that moment to go and see the Guru, yeah. right? And... Um, as he was walking back towards Guru Gobind Singh Ji, wherever Guru Sahib Ji was at that time, maybe in Ampur Sahib, um, by Joga Singh Ji thought to himself that, whoa, you know, nobody would do this, right? Like, yeah. I left my wedding, I left, like, everything in the middle of the ceremony to go and see my Guru. So they had this, like, this subtle, like, pride yeah. that came, that ego that came and said, they're like, you know what, I'm, I'm not too bad, you know, I'm, not, I'm quite a, a blessed person. Uh, but because of that, ego that came in him at that yeah. time it, you know when you give any space to ego then it opens the door you can yeah. manifest and yeah. you can manifest yeah. like um lost anger Maybe all that true. stuff yeah. and as he was walking he saw the house where vesa was, the house yeah. of prostitute and because he'd opened that door to that ego word come in yeah. it was lost so he ended up walking to the door of a of a prostitute keeping a long story short uh, but when he was walking to that door, there was a guard standing there. Right? And the guard said to him, that, what are you doing? You're sick of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. What are you doing at this door? And he felt so much shame that he carried on walking. And he walked back to Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. And he's very humbled at that time. And Guru Sahib Ji said very simply, that, did you not recognize me? That was me standing at that door, stopping you from entering. So the point there in that Saki was that by Joga Singh Ji, was, he was teaching us a lesson. Yeah. Why that um, by Joga Singh Ji, you know, they were loved by the Guru. And a lot of times, you know, we could sometimes, everybody has gets hit by ego at some points, right? Yeah. But by Joga Singh Ji, when they were hit by that, the Guru was still protecting them. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, that was the beauty of that Saki, that by Joga Singh Ji, no matter what happened in their lives, the Guru is always protecting them. And they're standing at that door to not let calm, let that, um, yeah. that action happen with that Vesava. Um, so yeah, that in... Essence is very yeah. famous Saki of Pai Joga Singh Ji and Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Joga can have many translations, but one that we would kind of link it to is Jog. To in this case mean like to be worthy, right? Mm-hmm. Are you worthy? Yeah. And when Guru Saji met Pai Joga Ji for the first time, they said, mm-hmm. "What was your name?" They said, "Joga," and they said, which means again worthy. And they said, "Who are you worthy of?" Guru Saji said, and and uh, Pai Joga said that I'm worthy of you. Like you know, yeah. that kind of relationship between them two. So it was a very loving relationship to have the Sikh and yeah. you know, to have the name of um, such a amazing Sikh from my history and the love they had with the Guru. To me, in that respect, it's cool because it's kind of like, like Guru Sahib, you say that you're worthy of of this yeah. Sikhi, that you're worthy of, do you get what I mean? That yeah. you are Joga, it? That you yeah. are worthy of this Sikhi. So that was quite beautiful. It touched my heart because it's, it's just how that name just came out the blue and I even remember, like, during my, um, it's so in that year, like, Eve, um, I would feel like sometimes I learned that as the the importance of charity as well. Like, there were times where I was at work going on the break, there'd be a homeless person outside um, on the street, and I would buy them food. So, it, just to add that to my, my, my journey, my first year, I, I felt like Maharaj was testing me as well. My sister once, uh, I think she, at the time she was working at a hostel, she was like, oh, uh, she felt sorry for, for a few of the people because they had no clothes. So I just gave like, um, like it would be literally at the same time when I'm watching videos um, of like Sikhi and stories. And then my sister came to me. So I felt certain times like okay, I was getting tested on my character. So it's, yeah, it's quite, um, so it's, it's quite interesting what I went through in that first year. But then leading up, okay, so um, should I, 
Yeah, you can just carry on. If you want. Carry on, yeah. Just a quick question for you, actually. Yeah, sure. Um, because you mentioned that obviously your family and having to move out. Um, how did your family react to it? You know, did you? So have... I'll tell you what happened yeah. then. So um, so after I received Amrit, it was, I, I just didn't like. I was just embracing this path, and it was um just like really trying to maintain it, do my nitnim. Uh, but I never told my family for two months. So it was like two months hiding, but but at the same time not hiding because I live in the same area. So it was like I was told by people avoid that area. Well, like because I didn't care. I would just be like if I'm out roaming. So there was a chance I could literally literally be on the street, and my mum could turn. Like that's how close like we were. We were in the same area. But luckily, uh, for two months they um. No one saw me. The reason why I was waiting was because, one, me being a guy, I didn't really care what my family say. But because for a woman, for a daughter of a family such as my wife, it's a lot harder for them. So I had to wait for her when she wants to tell her family. Because at this point, I, I couldn't go. Um, my in-laws, which I love so much, I don't know if they'll be watching this, but we still love you. And um, they don't talk to us now. Um, I'll explain after, but... Um, so they were kept asked. They, were, they kept asking my wife for oh, bring him, bring Asif, bring Asif over because I think her older sister had a newborn baby as well. But I couldn't because I'm looking like, you know, I'm a dice. <laughs> and yeah, so okay, so this is really strange because my wife she was holding out a bit too long, and I went to Sings camp as well. That was the first Sings camp. And that was, I think it was a three, four days it was. Mm. And what happened was my mum-in-law was getting suspicious. And this was so weird because I spoke to Sai's brother, Tarinjit Singh, mm. who, um, from Singh's camp, yeah. from, from Singh's camp, who, um, uh, sorry, when my wife told me that, for, for some reason, her mum, immediately said to her are you sure he's not he's not a Sikh and so I think because she knew I was growing my hair she knew I wasn't eating meat so mm. she just put the two together so I told Singh's camp brothers and they said you know what take that as a sign Maharaj is just you gotta tell your families mm. because yeah during that time after taking Amrit and Singh's camp I, I um, no one knew so we got back, then we told, so I sent, um, I just sent a message to my sister, the truth, uh, like, I'm a Sikh. I thought she would ring me and have a talk, but instead there was silence. She told my auntie, who then told my uncle, and it spread through the family. So I was a bit shocked with my sister, I thought she would, like, talk to me. My, wi- uh, my wife went to see her mum, then, see, she she was in the, still in the she hadn't fully made up her mind yet whether she was going to be a Sikh. She went to see her mum and told her mum the truth. She took her mum out to a park and then I think her mum was really upset, devastated. Her mum thought that she's going to leave me. And I didn't know what to expect because my wife kept telling me, listen, I'll still be with you if you're sick, this and that. She hadn't fully committed, but I knew deep down she loves her mum. And if she loses her mum, I might lose her. So I was just ready to accept whatever it is. Um, so she told her and then slowly it spread through the siblings she's got, because she comes from a Bengali family, really lot, lots of siblings and brothers. Uh, so they knew and then phone calls started happening with her and her, um, her, her siblings, mum going back and forth, arguing. With me, it happened around about the same time as well. Eventually when it got to, I think my, my uncle, um so yeah so I felt so, I felt more sorry for my wife I didn't really I'll be honest I didn't really um I, I love Siki so much that if my family really didn't want to speak to me so be it you know um if that's if that's the price to pay for Siki and you're someone who really wants this path because at the end of the day your family can come under worldly attachment as well even your own spouse so you have to do what you think is best. Um, I feel so more sorry for my wife because then she was so upset because they, 
she was put in a tricky situation because they were like asking her to basically leave me, and I think she said that she wants she she wants to be a Sikh. She doesn't want to leave me. She wants to be a Sikh, but she was she was already researching the faith and she knew the principles of it. So over a month went by, and she she fully made up her mind because she um she wanted to have a a Sikhi name. And so we went to a lo a, a Gyaniji and we asked for a hukam nama for her. Um because generally um if you're a Sikh child it, a newborn you, you, you have a hukam nama ceremony, isn't it? But if you're someone who has it, you you can have it in a later life if you haven't had yep. that before. So she wanted to be um so she she wanted to have a new identity as well. So she was known as Hanit Ko. Uh she she um yeah. It was strange because her old name started with H, as well. I won't say her old name because it's, it's she she's not here to you know agree, but yeah. So she uh, she became Hanid Kaur, and then over like another month later, when we were dealing with family drama, like if if you want to know, yes, there were angry phone calls. Like the, uh, my uncle was like, it was, if it, it it turned into full Islam versus Sikhi, like proper back and forth, back and forth. In the end, I st- I stood my ground. There was no death threats. I don't think she had any death threats. It was just really angry family members. A lot of them come out with stupid things. I think her side, her uncle said, "Oh, because of what you've committed, your naniji will be in hellfire now," which makes no logical sense. Yes, but then so we were dealing with that. She had a lot of it. She had to come. It was a bit of a hard time, especially for her. Families didn't want to talk to her because it spread throughout the whole family. My one of my aunties fully deleted me, like of my main family household, and like nothing. One of my other aunties didn't even message me. So, they did what it is. What happens is when you leave the faith. See, they they will say all these lovely things about Islam that it's a religion of peace and they talk about being merciful and having these virtuous qualities but if you're if you if you leave the faith they're taught to look down upon you cast you out you know regardless they'll just cast you out my wife I felt so, so sorry for her she lost her best friend that she knew since primary and family okay but friends do it this is what happened after on social media. We, the people that deleted us conveniently were Muslims. There was one or two that I knew that still speak to me even to this day. And one of them invited me to her wedding. She was really nice. Uh, I knew her from college time. So me and my wife went. It was, she was a Muslim as well. But majority of people that knew her, she was getting messages on Instagram like just about what she did. But then the best technique I found was Generally, if um, going back to um, kids being asked, for example, uh, to convert to Islam, if you're someone that knows you're Sikhi, flip the question and say, why shouldn't I be a Sikh? Because a lot of the times they don't know anything about Sikhi. Mm. If they ask you in whatever way they do, be a Muslim or say, say to them, why shouldn't I be a Sikh though? What can your faith offer me that my faith does not offer me? Okay, my faith already offers that. My faith already offers that. I don't need to be Islam. Does your faith talk about such kind and being uh, achieving jeev and mukt in this world? What we spoke about before. Nope. Okay, I'm happy being a Sikh. Done. That's how. That's that's how simply I've interpreted it. Mm. Um, but yeah. So it's so that's what happened that year. Over time, I mean, it's been quite a journey for me and my wife. I won't lie to you, it has been hard, it has had its battles, but one thing we remember that like, even though, especially for my wife, we can feel a bit lonely not having family. I think the last thing my mum said to me doesn't want anything to do with me, so it's so be it. And I don't. I think the last thing her mum said to her was she's made a promise to Allah that she won't speak to her again until she reverts back to Islam. So it's her siblings like, We've got open arms as Sikhs, you know. We we haven't stopped talking to them. As they've stopped talking to us. So, to me, it just says more about them and what they think. Because we all have principles, and those are taught by our faith. So, 
them not speaking to us and associating with us just says it just proves to me why I don't want to be part of that faith anymore. One thing I will add, we were asked um last year by a couple of people, me and my wife, we were asked, what would you do if your own kids in the future, let's say for example, if they went back to Islam? And we both had the same answer. We said that well one, it's our duty for our parents to teach them faith, sick um to being a sick. We want to them to be brought up in the Amvidavi household as it should be. Um, as long as we do our duty as a parent and they've been brought up and they know everything they should know, if they've grown up in their adult lives and they make a choice themselves to go into another faith, would we be angry with them? No, because they're human beings at the end of the day. They're, you know how a fruit off a tree eventually, once it's grown, it falls off? And the seed of that fruit is going to make its new tree. you got to let them go. Because your children are worldly attachments. The only purpose is it carries on the human race. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, but we, we have hope that they, that would never happen. You know, If we're ever blessed to have children. Um, in the future. We hope that they would be in a lovely. Um, uh, sick household. Uh, just to add so. Just to add about my wife as well, she was, so with her it took a bit of time, generally they, I will admit this and I don't mind admitting this because uh, this is reality of certain um, situations of people coming into Sikhi, you should be with another, uh, if you're married you should be with another um, Ambedari Sikh. Um, what what happened was in my Amit Sancho, they because I think they f- I came across young, so they never asked me if I was married, but they found out at the end I, when I already had received the Amit. So they spoke to me about that, and but the thing is, it's 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 so hard because she's just left her family, her family, mm. or come into Sikhi, so it's not always a black and white perfect path. Mm. Um. But we had a nun courage in twenty twenty two because we felt it was right, even though we're technically married. But by Islamic nikah, just yeah, that didn't sit sit right. We had mm. to be blessed with this new ceremony. Mm. We had that with Sangha that who we've met and just embraced us as family. They attended. My wife received Amrit. She was ready to, ready to receive Amrit Sancha. I went again, so uh, we were both blessed with Amrit. Uh, so that was amazing, and she. Oh, she she loved it. Um, in her, sorry, around about the same time she became a sick. She learnt herself how to do a damala a lot better style than mine. Like I was like, wow. So that that just proved to me that she came into Sikhi out of love, because not a lot of Sikh sisters would wear one wear a turban. Because I thought I didn't want to ask her because she might think was masculine. I don't want to wear that. But she actually learned it watching YouTube videos. Like I was watching her, like thinking, "Wow, where's this coming from?" But just love Maharaj Kippa. Mm. Really blessed. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. But yeah, that's that's just where we are now, and mm. yeah. So you still don't talk to your family to this day. To this day, so in the first two years, my sister and my mom were speaking to me off and on. My mom and I have always had a bit of a rocky relationship, but my sister would mean her would talk. My sister has always been triggered about associating with non-Muslims, especially Sikhs. She hates it. She literally lashed out with me a few months back about... Uh, no, uh, I'm, she, she's still struggling to comprehend I'm a Sikh. And my mum felt, felt the same, I think. Um, Have they ever seen you in this world? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't... Um, yeah, so that's an interesting one. So... I didn't see my, I didn't see them for months. Um, no, actually, no, I didn't see 2021, 22. So nearly two years, I didn't see my mom in person. She saw pictures of me because I used to meet my sister. The wider family, it was really weird because my uncle, you know, um, when I explained before about the family member, um, members and the phone calls that happened, me and my uncle had a big thing. He saw me in public once early in the morning. I was in full Khalsa whoop and I had a big turban on, a chuck of on my foot, on my turban, on my dwalla and a full, like, I think I was being a lawyer, big orange lawyer, so it was just so much colour. And you know when you're like, if you're, if you're a general person and you're randomly 
like this happens all the time like when i'm on the train like sometimes i'll surprise people because it's not every day you'll see like a like a warrior person wearing a shaster and a shield and his mm-hmm. back so it stuns people and he saw me like in public he didn't know what to say he we had a polite conversation like his tune from the phone call changed mm-hmm. i was prepared because i know because there are just to make it clear to to some people who leave um who don't know who people who so, uh people who leave islam sometimes it can get really ugly in some countries you can get killed because of the apostasy laws um They'll try sugarcoat it and say, oh, no, it has to be certain, probably certain conditions for that to happen under Sharia. But basically, well, if you're someone who's perceived as an enemy, which I'm pretty sure they perceive the Khalsa to be, especially with the history back in the day in Punjab, you, you're a dead person. And if you look at even in, especially in the UK, in cities and London, there are stories of ex um, ex-Muslims being attacked just because they left the faith. Um, so, is there videos on speakers? Yeah. Oh, no, I've seen of them saying that I would happily kill you just because you. Yeah, left Islam. you know what's shocking? There was a podcast. Uh, it's this famous. Um, there's a guy on YouTube, Patrick Bet David. His name is. He did a podcast of two Christians and two Muslims. One of the Muslims was an ex-Christian who came into Islam. One of the Christians was an ex-Muslim who came into Christianity. So it was a nice uh, mm-hmm. conversation. And one of the Christian, uh, the Christians, the one who uh, was an ex-Muslim, he it got a bit into a debate where they were sort of really shouting at each other. And he was saying to him, "Do you support me? Um, do you support the apostasy law of him self being killed because he left Islam?" And that guy who supports Sharia said, "Yeah, I think you do. I think you should be killed." So some of them admit it, some of them won't admit it because they want they don't want to be perceived as oh we're living in the Western world, it's a nice modern world. We don't want to sh- show people we have these radical views. Um, so when it came to my uncle, I was prepared to like anything happens. I don't care. I'm Maharaj is sick. Anything goes, so what? But nothing happened. Uh, it was fine. Um, people, uh, especially things at Sings Camp, told us just be mindful. Um, uh, they told us as well. If you if you ever meet them in future, don't eat anything from them. Be mindful. They only say that because especially if you're growing up in Pakistani, Bengali households, you know when they do Tavis a lot. Tavis. So I'm I'm sure you've heard of that term Tavis. So it's like like really it's against Islam, but this tends to be in in silly. Yeah, it's a cultural thing where. They might want to do something on someone. Black magic, basically. Black magic stuff, right? yeah. Yeah, so they might put something in your food. If you go to Holy Man and you tell them the situation, they'll be said, they'll probably say, okay, sweeten them up. If they come, put put this in their food, they'll probably do something, blow something. So it's very important as well that, um, it's very important that, especially as six, we uphold our rate. So uh, me and my wife, we didn't meet them or they never offered us um um, offered us anything but yeah um, yeah I've heard even people accepting like money taking picking up things like that you yeah, can even yeah. think so there's yeah. cases of this happening so you have to it's true you have to be mm-hmm. careful but but one thing I would say is like you were asking me this question and how like a bit previously how Sikhi has helped like were there were there um, um, were there moments where Maharaj just saved you and I would honestly say, like being sick now, going this to this back to this thing, I'll touch it, um, but it might be a bit spooky. But I don't mind sharing this story. So, uh, personal reasons, we were having experiences. This happened so um, in my household of like jinns and stuff. Islam really talks about this when you're young, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you get you, you get used uh, growing up Muslim. You get used to talking about jinns and stuff. It's just. It's part of the faith. The Quran talks about it, and as Sikhi, um, jinn referring to a ghost and spirits. Yeah, like, like evil, jinn evil is spirits. like it's another entity. So we, the three main entities that Islam talks about. So you have the humans. Uh, you have angels who are born of light. They have no free will, but you have the jinns, which is basically what they say Satan is. Shaitan, Iblis is the name for the main uh, jinn that is Satan. Um. So growing up, like you'll hear so many stories and things, and um, 
whether you believe this or not, but at the time we were going through something. Um, I, I can't give too much away because it, 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 there's a lot to it. Mm. And you would get, like, there's, you would get experiences of being, like, tormented and especially in the woman in the house. And it was, oh, it was, it was freaky. And I, I would had, I would get sleep paralysis a lot, honestly. I thought it would like stop when I got married. When I got, uh, when my wife moved in, um, she started experiencing it. Like when she, when, when once when she went to work, um, don't do this if you're married. But like, when, you know, generally if your wife has a diary, it's a personal note. But when she was at work, I thought, All right, let me have a little read. She she wrote about experiences of like just going like feeling presence in the house because what it was like even in Sikhi we believe in like spiritual energy or you know how we would call it as an aura Mm -hmm. so it's very important especially if you're someone who's a Sikh as well you do your listening to keep that that positive that uplift in you Mm. otherwise you're you're susceptible to like if your energy is low I believe you're susceptible to like because Sikhi doesn't talk about it, but Nanak Devji says there's many things out there. Mm. There's many things, including jinns as well. So I remember once when me and my wife were sleeping, there was something. I had like a skylight window, but it wasn't up. It was like there, but it was like high. And it was like opposite. So where we were sleeping, it was like there. And it was so... that I think that was the most freakiest experience because we felt... As if like something was wandering through, went went whoosh, and I felt it like you know when you're in deep sleep and you sort of experience it like something so close, you know it's like something's there. I, don't, I hope you guys haven't experienced it, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe in movies you might sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, know what I'm on about. So, um, but yeah, so I felt something was there, but the freaky thing was my wife screamed. Because she felt something too. And she said, oh my God, what was that? I mean, whoosh, thing went. So what I think is because we we, we um, generally, we believe there's many things out there in the world that sometimes it could, it could be things that are just floating by because they realize, because they felt all oh, the spiritual over of this person or this household's low, go in, see who's inside. Like it, it could be all sorts of things, but we felt something. Since we come into Sikhi, haven't experienced anything, which I'm so grateful for. One of the things I used to suffer with was sleep paralysis. I don't have sleep paralysis anymore. I don't have any um, experiences of anything being taunted by dreams. It was happening a lot. Um, so that was quite nice. And me and my wife, so we've seen the positives of coming into Sikhi, like spiritually as well. And I remember another time where this was like the first month of me receiving Amrit. I told myself, it was in the evening, I told myself, okay, um, I'm good. I had to pop out to the shops, but I stupidly told myself, I'll do Reva Saib after. And this is kind of why it's really important we do our prayers on time. For some reason, um, I went out, so I was going outside and I just felt my energy drop. It was uh, It was as if I was scared on the street and I was like, why am I feeling scared? It's just so strange. And like, it was, it's, it's like my energy, like, I couldn't be strong. And I was walking and I was just, like, really conscious of who's around me. The moment I came back home, I told myself, oh, I should have prayed before. Because the moment I did river side, I completed river side. And I, I went, whoosh, like, this energy. And I felt... So there's been a few times where I felt prayer is really important, even with soil aside, like sometimes where um, you might rush through it. And then I had a bit of a unpleasant sleep and I realized, you know what, I didn't do my soil aside right. Let me do it right now. And then I felt okay. So these are things that I experienced in the first few years. So I'm not sure. Oh, no, this is great because you yeah. this is one of the questions left, which is talking about um, have you ever have you felt protected, um, you know, once coming yes. into Sikhi and stuff, and that's that's great to know. And generally saying, um, obviously, like you said, being a, a you know being a convert, you know, yeah. just you know, it can make you more susceptible to people targeting targeting you <laughs> and stuff in it. But from that side, you know, sounds like good to get, but you're being fine. Um, yeah, and uh, good good work, God, and it stays like that going forward. Um, if there's nothing else from you before we finish with a final question, 
Uh, is there anything else you want to speak about? Uh, what, oh, if one, you want to ask me anything else. Yeah, that's what we've got like one question, yeah. yeah. One question I had, um, what, what we were speaking about earlier in the day was yeah. about the whole um, Islam, uh, they use this numbers thing. Muslims use the whole, yeah, there's two billion of yeah. us, right? That's a point that, so for example, so hopefully like for example we're making um a video now and hopefully inspires someone to stay in Sikhi or maybe it might inspire someone to come into Sikhi who knows um but I know there will be a certain side of people that might view it and they might think oh was he really a Muslim this and that and it's so and then I don't really pay attention I pay attention I don't really pay attention to those people Especially ones who bring up numbers, for example. Um, a common tactic I've seen Abrahamic faiths do is, oh, we got X amount of people in our faith. Especially Muslims, I think they say we, they have 2 billion or whatever the number is now. To me, I personally don't... I, 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 I don't take notice of that simply because the spectrum of being a Muslim is very... Um, it's, it's quite... It's wide as it, what really defines a Muslim because you get Shias, Sufis, Sunnis. When they give this number out, that number is collected by census that's take that's taken place around the world, various countries, and it's just a tick box. What really defines a Muslim? You might get a Muslim who who supports Sharia law. You might get a Muslim who doesn't support Sharia law. Doesn't support the the stoning of homosexual people, for example. You might get, um, for example, two years ago in November, so we celebrate Guru Nanak Dev Ji's birthday celebration coming to, into this world. Um, Amir Khan, the fighter, the boxer, I really liked him for doing this because on Instagram he posted a picture where he visited his birthplace in Pakistan and, and he wished to see community a happy celebration so i love that. That, that 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 was a really kind thing to do he's not telling people that um he's not telling people come into sikhi he's just complimenting a community on what they're celebrating and saying that his own personal experience of going to that place mm-hmm. nankana sahib is it called mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i haven't been there i would love to go to be blessed to go there one day mm-hmm. people from speaker's corner would be commenting underneath Simply saying no, we shouldn't be saying this. Uh, we, um, we shouldn't be saying this. We do not believe that the Sikh gurus were so and so, and they're going off on this tangent. And I, I immediately thought, but he's not saying that he believes in it. He's just saying his. He's just wishing some happiness. Yeah. Actually, and so it like just him. goes back to my other point. So someone like Amir Khan would be in that number that they're pointing out, but then. You don't, he's just proven though from the example I just gave that you won't agree with everything he says though. Mm. So, is he really a Muslim according to your standards? Mm. So, I don't get worked up with these numbers. You know, Maharaj Gilba, our Sikhi community is growing. Um, it's just certain things in the community we have to just we, we um, care more about quality, tackle than quantity. Yeah, and we, right. we, I've seen people go from from nothing to Maharaja's Rupa like this Singh's camp was is so amazing I know I met Singh's who are like haircut when they're telling me the stories as soon as I we left Singh's camp a week later they put up in the group chat oh they've attended the Amritsan chat I'm like whoa mm. I did not see that coming so it, it just hits you and I would definitely say for anyone out there if I didn't say this before Camps are a must. Owe it to yourself. If you're someone thinking about leaving the faith, but you come from a Sikhi household, give it a chance. Definitely owe it to yourself to attend one camp in your lifetime. Camps are life changing. It mm. shows people want to change. That's why they go there mm. in the first place. And I, you don't know how your story might inspire someone else's story or vice versa. Um, a lot of people ask me to tell me uh, their, uh, my story to them, but. I'll be honest, because it's been a few years, I kind of get sick and tired of my own story. <laughs> I kind of want to hear other people's stories. You can just say to watch my YouTube video now. Yeah. <laughs> check out. I, check I out remember the first day you told your story at that singers camp. Oh, I one. cried. It, it you was... know, that was the, that was because that was two months later and it was just fresh in the emotions. I literally cried in front of, mm. I think it was a hundred sings there and 
it was honestly genuine and what and was the thing point he was you were there? making then sorry i forgot it was um i think you were talking about how lucky we are Sikhs, right what was the you mean back at Sikhs camp yeah what was talk? that talk that you did that day what was the main points that you were making no, yeah, we were talking about our journeys coming into Sikhi. So I was yeah. telling everyone how I, um, I think I ended it off with basically saying that you don't know how lucky you are coming into this faith, you know. And I, mm. I said, if if I can do it, you can do it, you know, you know, mm. coming onto this path. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was, yeah, that was just emotional. I remember that even the energy in that room was See? crazy. Like the amount yeah. of and yeah. like, it made oh. It made a lot of us realise as people that are born into Sikhi, you know, how much we've taken it for granted and how obviously everybody struggles on their own journeys, but, you know, to see the struggles that you went through, um, you know, and that I like the way you put it earlier about other individuals, how Sikhi found them yeah, and how Sikhi yeah, found yeah. you uh, and, you know, how blessed you felt and how lucky we are that, you know, we've basically got it, you know, on our doorstep. We've got mm-hmm. it. We've not, you know, really embraced it that much. So you know, for you to say that, you know, it really hit home we have a lot of the singers there who are always probably sitting on the fence for most mm-hmm. of their life, innit? Yeah. Um, calling themselves a sick. But yeah. um, no, shout out to Sings Camp again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, what would you say to um, the song about Sings Camp? Should they come to the next Sings Camp? Definitely. If there's, if there's still spaces, you owe it to yourself to apply, attend, experience it, what it's about. You don't... It's not you walk in and you're expected to be an Ambedari sick. It's about... Gaining this understanding of what Sikhi is really about and how to be as a human being, how to live your life, how you perceive the world and others, and just really having that love for everyone and worshiping the one creator. That's, you know, that's, it's as simple as that. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, that's... sorry, one thing just came to mind. It's a bit of an tangent, but you're talking about that Amir Khan post, right? Yeah. I've seen a lot of uh, posts of when there's a tragedy or something happens and people will just be like, oh, I pray for them, pray for that person, or like, may he rest in peace, whatever, right? But in Islam, there isn't really a concept of praying for non-Muslims, is there? For someone who's died? I don't really um, think there is, because even when it's of a, like, for example, just flipping that, when there's celebration events, like, how many Muslims would really say happy Vesaki mm. in general, or happy... Like not, it's not that they believe in it, but they're taught that anything that's not Islamic, not to entertain. I know someone, for example, who refused to hand out Christmas cards, working in a school, refusing to hand out Christmas cards. Well, not not a Muslim, but it's not anything that's un-Islamic mm. is to them is pointless. Yeah, and it's sad. I mean, again, but you 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 would get Muslims who. They might be more open, and mm. you know, you, you know, when they say this is this is just my personal view. When they say, but the Muslim community isn't like this because ninety percent of the community doesn't do this. Fair enough, good point. But how many of those Muslims deep down though have really a radical view? They just don't want to. They love this Western society and what it offers. Mm. you know but they don't want to compromise their faith or, or they maybe just because they've been brought up that way and the family yeah. pressure and that they, yeah. they don't want to ever step outside or even say anything mm-hmm. that could be considered so it's again it's a bit of a fearful thing right mm. it's like something that just came to mind when you're speaking about this is our six guru guru how to go inside yeah like they're built on a seat they're built yeah. a mosque, mosque for yeah, the muslims yeah. right even after they they fought the battle uh, um go the border which became a how to go the border sahib against the Mughal army, right? So, you know, again, just to reiterate that point that there's no enmity between a Sikh and another faith, um, that again, the Guru themselves even built a mosque so the Muslims could pray, mm. right? So the idea that, you know, it doesn't matter, that's the whole idea, I guess, of when it comes to Sikhi, that is very inclusive, that you could be of any faith and that you could take so much from Sikhi and the Sikhi would make you stronger in your faith. Yeah. According to the principles that are universal, that Sikhi believes in, again, of meditation, of prayer, of service, of love, for That's why I say, Sarabhata da Pala, our Ardas is a Sikh, it's for everybody's Pala. Yeah. It's not just for our own Pala. And Guru Nandaji Maharaj, yeah. people say, why do they tell a Muslim to become a good Muslim, or a Hindu to become a good Muslim? It's, it's, it's a very, I think, a very one-dimensional way of looking at it. 
it's not that it's Guru Nanak that is telling them how you can be the best person and here's your principles and take upon the principles in this way right that if you don't just attend a place of worship as a ritual uh, like they say Mehid and Masid that if you don't have compassion inside you yeah. why are you going to a place of worship if you don't have no compassion right yeah. or, or mercy right so because obviously uh, Garvi Singh spoke earlier about the whole, whole idea that we're not amalgamation of two faiths we're actually an evolution yeah. which is a cool way of putting it I um, would say uh, even that is not uh, giving justice to Sikhi yeah. because it's beyond evolution Sikhi was the truth before yeah. Art Satyagas Sikhi Satyagas, is the Satyagas. truth that's it it's, it's, it's always truth, yeah. been the truth that's always been there yeah, right? So, and, and we've had elements of that truth in these other faiths and so mm-hmm. it, this is an interesting thing because we were speaking to that kid who, who recently converted and I was, we were just talking about the similarities of like our belief of God yeah. and all of that. And there were so many similarities between Islam and Sikhi, mm-hmm. right? And then I said to him, look, at the end of all of this, right, we we believe in like probably, I don't know, 70, 80% similar stuff. Do you still think I'm going to go to hellfire if I'm doing the same, uh, this one charity, I'm doing the same prayers as you and all that, or praying to yeah. the same God as you? It doesn't make sense. Even was Christians. Like, yeah. I remember Christian once tried converting me when I was doing, I was doing Shabil where I um, live at a local station, I'm giving out water. And that spot is is known for having, like, you, you, you'll you get um, Muslims handing out a Quran, trying to preach. You'll get Christians uh, just preaching Jesus. Jesus is the way. So, But we're there, a group of Sikhs, and we're giving out water. It's a very hot day. It's like mid-June, July. And a Christian is trying to, he, he like, he he comes up to me conversation and I said I'm not here to convert everyone I'm just giving out water and I told him about Shabi and he said but I'm here to convert you and I said <laughs> you can try <laughs> and he comes out with but I believe um, he doesn't you could tell they know nothing about Sikhi they're just being programmed to think the certain way only their way is the way and everyone else is wrong he's like to me um, Satan is telling you to do this. I'm like, Satan is telling me to get up early in the morning and pray. Satan is telling me to do charity. <laughs> Satan is telling me to treat everyone as one. <laughs> the program, like, when they talk about Islam and Christianity, is because I, I also research Christianity as well, because I thought if I'm going to be talking about moving faiths, let me research. I'll put Christianity in there. Mm. And they talk about how um, Satan whispers things in your ears, because we, we, we don't really entertain the idea of a shaitan in that way mm. we because we talk about the five vices which to me makes it makes more sense it's internal I find I find you blaming Shaitan's whispering things in your ears and in Ramzan he gets locked up or um, oh, sorry I think that's the the Jal but if I'm not I can't remember now but the Shaitan that's whether it's him as well that gets locked up as well so um, but it's just to me it was just very strange ideology because i don't know if anyone's ever watched there's a netflix show called lucifer it's a comedy i don't know if you're yeah, like, yeah. if you've seen that I've seen but it. it's it's basically the real satan he comes to earth to experience earth and what is the point is is that many people in that show they do bad deeds in his name and blaming him and he's like i'm not even where i wasn't even telling you this mm. so just thinking the point out to perspective is like if there was a um entity like islam if islam call, um, calls it iblis uh, christians call it lucifer whether that entity existed probably did probably long and dead by now very ir- irrelevant you know we're in control of our own actions and we get judged by our own actions it's the five vices to me so that's another aspect i forgot to mention before <laughs> No, that makes sense. You know, I saying, you know, one other thing I just remembered you said earlier that your grandfather was a Sikh? Yeah. Oh, what? Mm-hmm. My grandfather was. Well, did you say he was a Sikh or something? Or... Oh, no, he was unwell, as in that. Oh, okay, okay. That Sikh. Oh, that's but, sick. um. <laughs> I thought you were like, he's a Sikh. That's like... what halfway. That's what halfway said as well. What happened was, though, but I'll quickly add this in. When, um, so I never saw my, my, my grandma passed away in 2020, um, of that year. Uh, my, 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 yeah, so she, 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 she was my nani ji, my nana ji. He, I, I never saw him for two years because the thing is, he lives in my family house. My auntie, who deleted my number, never even spoke to me when she found out I was a Muslim. Never said, you know what, son, come over, let, let's have a chat, you know. So I couldn't really, it's not that I was scared, it's, 
I, I don't know. His he doesn't have a phone. He's you know he's old. He doesn't. But I love my grandfather. Growing up and I um. Growing up, I didn't know Punjabi or Urdu because my family never taught me it. So I, I again Punjabi. If you know Punjabi, don't be afraid to learn Punjabi. It's so important. You don't want to end up like me because the one obstacle I face is. I'll have an uncle coming up to me or Gyaniji speaking Punjabi and I don't know. Like, it's awkward. Um, that's something I'm slowly learning. But yeah, so with, with my grandparents um, growing up, it was always broken English. I had a nice relationship. They, uh, I never saw him for two years. He ended up in hospital. My sister told me he was really ill. This is another blessing of Maharaj. And I was like, okay, you know what? I have to see him. I had a charity cycle ride to to do on a Sunday I told my sister I'll, I'll see him Monday did the charity cycle right I was so worn out I told my sister listen I can't see him tomorrow I need to rest I'll see him Tuesday because no one knew he was in a really bad state he was like on the ward constantly on, 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 on the bed and so Tuesday went by something happened I couldn't go I did Wednesday and I, something happened and then I was like I told myself, sister, listen, I'm seeing him Thursday, no matter what. Because what it was, he's got quite a big family. Lead. They were coming Tuesday, Wednesday. I didn't want them to see me. You know, it just, mm. I've had it be less people. So my mom and sister said, listen, come Thursday evening to the hospital. Went to the hospital. That was the first time I saw my mom in two years. She's seen me in pictures, but it was the first time. She was calm for the first time seeing me in person. So I could see it was a big thing for her. Saw my granddad after two years and the first thing he did was in the bed. My mum quickly ran over to him just to let him know I'm here because he didn't see. I'm wearing full bana, damalla, and he sees me and he puts his arms out like this. And I go to hug him and he kissed my turban at the top. He grabbed it. So that meant so much. And I was with him for a couple hours. Then you got to leave the hospital. Um... A few hours later, in the morning, my sister thinks me crying, saying that he's passed away. And I, I, I was like, I didn't know what to make of that. And I was like, I was so... You see, the thing is like, I don't want to say I was upset because one, he had a long life in his 90s. And two, Siki teaches us that everything has a, you know, it's, it, it'll move on one day, you know. And... That was like, I could have missed my window and not seen my granddad. He died the night before. I was the last person to see him. And I, I told Sangat about it. And they told me that, you know what? That was like Maharaj's blessings. And maybe he might, um, maybe he might um, be blessed in the next life. Like something. Because it was, just, it was just weird. Like I was the last person he saw. I could have easily missed my window. So I thank Maharaj for that you know that was just a gift and you feel like he accepted you as well dude. yeah I felt that because I always knew in his heart he, he he loved Sikhs he didn't have that really in him you know looking down or anyone so I'm happy I got to see him one last time I wish my nani ji saw me but she died before I became a Sikh sadly due to Covid Um, just to, just to finish off here thank you so much Basil, for coming on I have a sharing experience. Thank you, It's very brave of you as well um, to come on as well. And uh, not just from the aspect of um, converting, but just tell your story and be so open. So uh, thank you so much. And I'm sure the Sangat really appreciate you taking this time and I'm sure it'll benefit many people. Um, maybe just to finish off with just one last thing, uh, just bringing it back home. What is that one thing that you uh, love about Sikhi so much? What is that one thing in Sikhi that you feel so connected to? And if you could share that experience with the Sangat and say, hey, you, this is what is being, keeps me so close to Sikhi and this is what you guys are missing out on. If somebody, you know, is sick by name or they're searching for that truth, uh, what would that message be um, to the Sangat? It's, it's such a, lo a loaded question because it's like, it's hard putting it into words. Honestly, like, I hope through what I've said in this talk, it's, like you're able to see how Siki has just helped me and blossomed, not just me, but everyone else who's embraced Siki, you know, in, in their own way. It's made us blossom. It's made me, I just feel myself as grown as a person. This Siki is a way of life. 
you know it's it's just it's empowering it helps you put things into perspective on how you it's just how you see the world um comparing to how what where I was years ago to now like I would never have seen myself come into uh this path definitely it it all starts from there's that famous quote in Sikhi, if you take one step towards uh, Maharaj Maharaj will take a thousand steps towards you and I have experienced that there's been times the the path of Sikhi is a very hard battle you know uh we, we um there's also another quote where it's like walking on a thin line that's as sharp as a sword yeah we'll put it on the so even when you feel like you're going you're having highs and lows and sickies that i i personally feel there's been times that Mahavaj just still blessed me doing seva and just, just just working on myself all it takes is taking that first step though mm. from your side and i think you know when you said that it's hard to put into words as I can tell, it was very difficult for you, which is completely fine. The, the Shabbat that came to my mind from Japji Sai was Jeho Jana Akanahi. Even if I knew what to say, or if I knew about them, I couldn't speak about it anyway. Uh, but they give us this one teaching, Gura Ikadehe Bujai, Sabuna Jiya Ka Ikadata, So Mevisadullajai, that. But the Guru is giving this one teaching, there's only one giver, there's only one God, there's only one Vahe Guru Allah, there's no difference. I may never forget them. And that's, I think, um, you know, from your uh, talk today, that's that connection you spoke about. Yeah. That's the most important thing, right? Any final messages or we can finish off here, bro? I think, I, I think, I, I feel like I've over-talked, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Vijay. Thank you, Vijay. Why could you go, Khalsa? Why could you give